Hey, my name's Dale. I'm a librarian here at the University of Utah, and I'm here to talk to you about how to really quickly determine whether or not something is valid or not that you find out on the open web. Right now, in our current era, disinformation is seen as a big societal issue. And as a social sciences librarian, I'm very interested in discovering what's going on with disinformation and even outright propaganda and media manipulation. This has been going on forever. Um, so I'm going to give you a few tips. Um, but if you want to reach out to me, I'm right here. If you want to see some of the other librarians, you have a librarian. If you're at the University of Utah, every discipline has their own librarian. You can find them in the research guides. So electrical engineering, data science, um, I'm social sciences, communication. So I look at things like rhetoric and disinformation and things like that. So here's your rules for determining whether or not you can believe something that you find on the web or whether you should dig a little bit deeper. Um, so the first thing you can look at is Snopes. Have you heard of that? That's like a debunking website where popular rumors will be actively researched by somebody. I don't quite know. Um, and you can just get a quick estimate of whether something. But what's going on in um, these days is there's like a lot of rumors that don't make it to Snopes because they don't have enough time to cover everything. Um, so here's some rules of thumb that you can go with. Um, if you're not sure, ask a librarian, and we can help you with this same criteria, too. Um, when you go to the research guides, campusguideslibutah.edu slash padre, I put together a set of criteria that you can use. But if you've ever heard of the crap test, or if you've heard of radar, there's a whole bunch of them that are similar acronyms, where you're looking um, with a set of criteria and information and determining whether or not it's OK. Um, and this works for any information whatsoever. Should you go see a, should you see Oppenheimer, or is that a bad idea? You might ask people, and you might figure out what information to follow, different people's opinions and things like that. I still haven't seen it. I would love to see it. Um, OK, so um, let's look at some disinformation. Is, uh, does the iPhone consume more uh, power than a fridge? Uh, well, one thing here says, uh, and I have no idea what market watch is, but they say it consumes 100 times less electricity in their fridge. That's a conveniently round number. I'm a little suspicious already. Um, does putting an iPhone in the fridge help? Help with what? <laughs> um, but here's one. Here's a specific one. Your iPhone, your iPhone uses more energy than a refrigerator. Holy cow, that's alarmist. And it makes me, and a, a percentage of all disinformation that goes out there, whether it's been put out in good faith or whether somebody's trying to sell something, Disinformation, whether it sounds crazy to us or not, affects a, a significant amount of the population for whatever their target audience is. Um, so sometimes we fall under that and we just go straight into a panic. So here's how you decide um, whether to believe if your phone uses more, uh, if you should switch to Samsung or get a Google. Um, so <laughs> there's advertising. Um, your, this one says your iPhone uses more than a fridge. Um, first thing we could do, hey, there's Elon. Uh, first thing we can do in any of these criteria is, do I know why this information exists? Good question. Why would somebody go to the trouble to publish a website? Um, so I, I might look up Carmel, Carmel Labello, um, or I might go, well, what the heck is the week? And here they have a picture of the head of Ukraine. In a, in a caricature so that they must be credible. So there's all these cues that can support that it's good information, but I'm not sure that I was looking for this information. Um, so I don't know why. I, it kind of pushed, I just freaked out when I saw that the, the social media post or something like that. So I don't know why the information exists. Um, and it should be a simple question. Is it there to inform you? Is it like WebMD where they're not necessarily selling anything? They're just telling you how to fix a compound fracture or something like that. So let's move on to authority. Who's saying this? Well, I could Google the week and figure out what that is. Or I could look and see what their statement, their advertising statement is. Um, I could look up Carmel Labello, but that sounds like a made up name. So I, I dug in here and somebody said the paper rather ominously said, the cloud begins with coal. Oh dear, maybe we need to um, go with coal. I don't know what this is saying. But I found a name in here. Oh, you know what? I think I just clicked on it. Um, here's the paper. Wow, does it look scholarly. It's got that wrapper. It's kind of like some, somebody showing up with full 
um, formal clothing on and you're like, we must believe them. Have you noticed that all politicians and our, our most car sales people or bankers wear suits and ties or formal um, clothing like that? Um, it could be that they're trying to convince us that something is going on. Um, so let's look up Mark Mills of the Digital Power Group, which I've already spared you the search. I've already done it. Um, one red flag is somebody, Ars Technica, which is like I used to read when I was in IT. Um, it's, a, it's a fun magazine. It's kind of pop lit, but it talks about like tech trends and things like that. Oh, dear, they're calling it pure nonsense. But let, let's give this person um, benefit of the doubt and look up who they are. So this is somebody that's a senior fellow in the Manhattan Institute. So let's go here. And then I discovered it's a policy think tank. Policy think tanks are people who work in collaboration with people who are making policy, people who want to influence policy. So if I was in the electric, electricity industry, um, I might want to convince them, oh, we need to go to coal, don't do this solar. Um, and so I find out that they're a conservative think tank. So they're focused on, um, well, it tells you right here, domestic policy and urban affairs. And if we go back to this paper, we can see that they're interested in forwarding coal energy. A lot of this is a lot more than you would actually do, right? But it's good to look up, like, was I looking for the information? Um, do I know who the author is? And you start to glean things like that. Um, another one that you can look at is when was the info produced? 2013, 10 years ago is a long time, um, especially in our current century. Um, the relevance was, again, was the information looking for me or was I looking for something scholarly and stumbled on this? Are they the only people saying this? Does the, um, the publication, uh, <laughs> what's the global digital ecosystem? Oh, here we go. Sponsored by the Mining Association and the Clean, Oil, Clean Coal for Electricity. Being an objective thinker, think of yourself as like having a hazmat outfit where you're kind of like a doctor in the room where you're seeing somebody suffering from something. We see all of the different things going on and we use that criteria to determine what direction we're going to go next objectively as we possibly can. So I don't need to react um, seeing that it's the mining industry but I know that they might have a bias for continuing uh, research funding to maybe develop clean coal. That's a fair assessment. But when I go back to this, somebody making a claim saying your iPhone uses more energy than a fridge and no one else is talking about that, I might consider that they might have a bias and they might be pushing an agenda and I might have to be worried about stuff like that. Um, <laughs> this Dale. I'm a librarian. I'm happy to help. Are you interested in doing further research? Reach out to me and I'll connect you with your librarian.